And welcome back everybody to DEF CON 28 safe mode. Continuing on with the Blue Team Village OpenSock CTF walkthrough. We're gonna be talking about Moloch today and we have Bashar Shama here to give us a, a quick discussion and a walkthrough on the tool. And uh, welcome uh, Bashar. Thank you. Hello everyone. I am Bashar and I'm gonna go over how we are gonna use Moloch tomorrow during the CTF. Uh, I was actually introduced to Moloch two years ago, playing the same exact CTF that you're going to play tomorrow. I played it two years ago, and I really, really fall in love with Moloch. So since then, I started playing with it, tinkering with it, just use it as much as I can, and I keep using it to the day today. Um, the, the, the goal today is to really prepare you on how to use Moloch uh, on the CTF tomorrow. So uh, we will have time for questions at the end. Please post any questions that you have to the text workshops track one channel in the Discord. The moderators will monitor your questions and we're kind of ask them at the end, towards the end of the session. So keep your questions, throw them away. We'll, we'll have some time at the end to go over some questions. So let's go ahead and get started. So uh, a, a very brief intro on what Molek is. It's a pretty much a free open source tool. Uh, it's really a network analysis tool that you can use to analyze a large volume of packet data or PCAPs. Uh, if you wanna, the, the simplest way to think about it is if you've ever used Wireshark, it's like a Wireshark uh, front end with a huge big database back end. So you can search tons and tons of PCAP data, gigs of data, hundreds of gigs of data of PCAPs very easily, very quickly. Uh, that's a very, very, very 10,000 over 10,000 overview of Moloch. For our purpose here and for the CTF tomorrow, what I have done is actually I, I have Moloch set up and I got some about four gigs of data uh, as a sample from the uh, network forensics training of first 2015. I downloaded these PCAPs and I pretty much loaded them into Moloch to kind of show you how we, how, how we can use this tool to do our investigation and answer the questions during the CTF tomorrow. So our scenario for today is, and you got, you're part of the security team and you received a call saying, hey, around 1 p.m. today, or not today, 1 p.m. on March 12th, 2015, our main company site has been defaced. Somebody has changed the way our website looks like. All we know is we have this image of a file showing as a frog on our main site, and we don't know how this happened. Can you please help us? And all you know is you have access to packet capture. You have packet capture and that's what you do, and you have access to Moloch. So let's walk right through it. So if you have never seen Moloch before, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is a general over, general, uh, this is when you land or you log in, you will land pretty much in the sessions tab. And that's where you're gonna probably spend most of your time tomorrow in the sessions tab. Uh, usually I would like to go and just do drop down here on the time and the date. And I would do all time, all day, just to have a understanding of how big the incident is. Um, you know, for the purpose of tomorrow, again, it's gonna be a very specific time period. But um, this is where I would start. And let's go ahead and deep dive into the investigation and how can we use Moloch. So, the first piece of information we know is the, the date of the incident. So we know it's on 2015. So I, as you can see, Moloch can give us this ability to just click through and decide on the dates that we want to investigate. Um, I'm going to do 12. So we have our date here. That's going to be our starting date. And then I'm going to just copy it, paste it here, and I'm going to change this to 13 which will show us here now, oh, you're working at one day time range. So I have my time range set up, I'm gonna go search. And now I kind of narrow it down to that 24 hours period to kind of figure out what happened during that day. Now, the other piece of information that we were given was, it was our main company's website. So how can I search for that? Probably I wanna look for our host name. So what I can do is I can type post and then Moloch would automatically parse the different fields 
based on the protocols that exist in the packet. So if it was HTTP traffic, then Moloch will say, okay, well, this is a, a HTTP host name. If it's an email, then it's an email host name and so on. Um, in my case, because I want to see everything, all kind of host name, I can just say host. And to specify what I'm looking for in Moloch, I would just so I would just say equal equal. So equal equal means show me everything that matches exactly our um, host name on ad.ac. Okay, that's the first bit of it, and I can run that. I also know since it's our website, I want to say, well, it's a website. It's going to only run on two ports, for example. So to kind of add more queries into Moloch, what, 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 you, what you need to do is you just do just two amp signs as an and, and I'm gonna open parentheses and add the ports that we need. So port equals 80, just like we did before, and port equal 443, which we know they both are HTTP ports. Now, before we go any further, you know, under ports, I can say, well, I can specify I want it to be a destination port, I can be a source port, or so on. Or just to keep it general, and we can see everything here, I'm just gonna say, okay, these ports, this host name, and let's see what we find. And I messed up something, of course. Oh, I'm saying and here, and that should be or. So it's either port 80 or port 443. And that, Oh, and so in that case, I just do two uh, pipelines and run that. Not pipelines, but pipes. And now I'm saying, okay, show me everything for the list host on port 80 and port 40. And now I can see the traffic. So let's go and dive deeper. From this traffic, I can see all kind of requests. Um, and let's just open something very randomly. Just open up this request, and I see it's a GET request. And before we go down, um, let's spend some time here. So I can see Moloch will, will parse all the fields in the packet. So I can click on any of these, and I can say, OK, well, what protocol did it come from? Which IP, which ports? Um, if it's HTTP packet, then it will also parse the method, the status code, all of these things. Um, it will also parse the user agents. Let's say I'm interested in knowing all the user agents that happen to ha happen in that specific day that visited our website. I can easily click on user agents, and I can say, okay, export unique user agents with counts. Once I click that, I will see a new page showing me the unique user agent, along with how many times we've seen this in that specific day, and the other one. So we only see two different user agents, um, nothing abnormal, nothing suspicious, so nothing to worry about here. Um, if we scroll a little bit now, we can actually see the actual request uh, in raw, the raw request, so I can see which host they're requesting, where they, the URI they're going after, and so on. Because I know we had an incident and I know the, the website has been defaced, the attacker must have sent some kind of data to our website. So most likely they will not be doing a GET request. When we see GET, it's just, just pulling data from our website. They're gonna be posting or sending some kind of data. So let's exclude this. So I'm gonna click GET and we don't want GET anymore. So I'm just gonna say not GET. It automatically adds that to our query. And let's hit search, see what we find. So now we went down to only 12 entries. Okay, that's much easier to kind of go through and like investigate. Um, again, we're not sure what happened, but one thing I can search, search for is by time to kind of understand the, uh, the timeline of these different requests and the events. And uh, let's just open something random. So again, same kind of feels like it's parts and so on, let's look at the request. So now it's a post request. And it's just requesting index.php. So let me turn off the And I see a test and sleep 
I'm not sure what this all this stuff really means. And I also see this gibberish stuff. What is this? Like, I don't understand. So if you look at the header, which is more like already displays for you, it tells you it's actually encoded with GZ. GZ is just a method of compression that web browsers use to compress the data to transfer the least amount of traffic. So the nice thing with Molech, what we can do is I can just click uncompress, and now it automatically will decode this packet for us, and now I can easily read it and see, oh, okay, this is what loaded, this is what the page is showing, and from what we see here, nothing of interest yet. Okay, that was useful, encrypt, but let's, let's, let's keep going, let's find out what happened. So another request, and see this, but this is like, this looks like an IP address, but what is all this? I don't know. Well, what we can do is, Molek has CyberShift built in. Well, CyberShift is a separate open source project, but um, that you can actually just go and do CyberShift, and you can load it a set outside of uh, CyberShift. There we go. And you can just load it outside of Molek and you can do your decoding. But let's get back here. The beauty of this is when we do it from Molek, it will automatically take that packet data and put it in for us. So what is CyberShift? It's pretty much a, a tool, a web GUI that you can use to de do different decoding of different languages, um, me uh, encoding mechanism, and so on. So in this case, it's taking the hex code and just decoding it. And while I'm looking at this, I can see these percentage signs. Percentage sign means it's a, it's a URL kind of thing. So you can easily just drag your URL decode. And now I kind of see the decoded message here. Now I can see, oh, it's trying to ping this IP address, which is the same, which is the same IP that's trying to visit. OK, this is interesting. I'm not sure if they were actually able to ping, but it looks like this IP is trying to do something here. Um, let's keep going, see what else can we find. Next packet, same thing, test, okay, nothing here. Next packet, so on. Oh, there's an NC. Okay, what, what is this? Hold on a second. Let's pull it up again in CyberChef. Do the same method, decode the URL. And now we see an NC IP address in port. So NC stands for netcat, which is the utility attackers can use to have a server connect back to them and get shown in that box. So what this is saying is, okay, connect back to my IP over this port. So what this means, if this actually succeeded, that means this our server connected back, back on this IP address. Okay, well, let's see if this actually happens. I'm going to take that port. I'm going to clean all this up. And then uh, I'm going to add the IP address. Uh, it's not going to be the source. And port equals the port that we're looking for. The search for it. And we have traffic. Uh-oh. This is not good. Looks like our box which is the source here connected back to the server over this port. And we can see how many packets and how much, the amount of data that was sent back and forth. So immediately I would say, okay, well, this is the first connection that has the highest number of packets that might have something interesting in it. So let me open it up. Scroll down and we can actually see the whole uh, conversation back and forth now. What it looks like, that attacker ran a command, which is ID, or which is equal to who am I on Windows, to figure out who the, who the attacker is running as on this box. And they're running as Apache. Then they try to figure out which folder they're in, and they try to access uh, file systems. OK, this is not good. And then they did this cat index PHP, which is, looks like it's our website. They saw their looking into what's inside our main file and so on. And okay, what is all this? Oh, and then I see another netcat command here. 
and saving the connection as a CM0 PHP file and our box locally. So I really I'm interested in knowing what this is, but let's 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 keep going. Let's see what else they did they do in this box. And if we go here, they actually did it for us. They did a cat on this file that they created. Okay, when they did that, we can see, oh, it's a PHP backdoor. This is not good. So they use the PHP backdoor on our site. So how am I gonna now figure out what did they do? I know because how backdoors work, they have to visit this PHP file explicitly to kind of load the command they wanna run. So what I can say to Malik is, well, show me all the URIs. So when we say a URI is um, pretty much everything after the domain will be a URI, so anything from here on, that's a URI. So I wanna say, show me everything that has this in it. And since I can't just do like all, what I do in Malik is I just use wildcards at the beginning. So I don't care what's before this. And, and the end, meaning I don't care what's after it, just show me anything that this has this string in the URI. And when I search it, now here we can see all these URLs or URIs with all these different links in them. What's that they're trying to do? Well, how can I know, like, how can I get all this put in like one nice place? I can just click and in info. And I want to say export unique URI with accounts. Now, Malik will take this for us and tell us, okay, well, this command was run five times. This command was run three times and so on. So now I kind of know which commands they ran because I can see it's a command equal cat, command equal cat or ls or whatever they're trying to do. And I kind of see here, there's a JPEG file as well. Okay. So this is how they probably got that JPEG file of the, or the image of the fraud into our website. So let's 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 find out where did they like how did they do this? Um, let's go back here and let's do instead of this, we are looking for that specific JPEG file. So I'm gonna do wildcard and show me anything that has JPEG in it. Load it up. And it's going to show me a lot of stuff. Um, I'm going to say probably it's going to be the biggest file. So I'm going to sort by the size of the data. And this is the biggest file that we have. So it's loading. And here I can see, yeah, it's an image file. And, but I'm not sure what it looks like. So what I can do in Moloch is I can just click on show images and files and it will actually render it for us right here in the browser. Now, if let's say, you know, I'm not comfortable with doing this or I want to dig in deeper to it or I want to understand what actually happened using Wireshark because I never used Moloch before. At any session, at any point, you can always just click on download cap, pcap and it will kind of like save the PCAPs for you. So you can open up in Wireshark and, you know, do your analysis manually if you like to. Um, pretty much um, that's how they get the file and that's how they deface our website using a backdoor. Um, if we have time, I think we have another, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. so. With that being said, I think that's the highlight of Molik and how to use it. Um, I want to keep some time for questions. Um, please let me know what kind of questions you got. I'm also going to be in Discord, I'll be on Twitter if you need anything else, but I'm, I'm going to be here for waiting for any questions that you guys have. Thank you, Bashar. Uh, I went ahead and put a note in the text window under the workshop track one with a link over to Recon FSX Open Sock Moloch uh, Discord channel. Um, so definitely check that out. Obviously hit uh, Bashar up on Twitter and Discord, uh, but we're trying to help everybody kind of connect with the uh, uh, the right people here so you can get the help you need. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Bashar, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, appreciate your time, thank you.
take care.